You ready to go? OK, I think it's 10.30, so I'd like to get started, because we really just don't have very much time for breaks. And I apologize for that, but uh, I just felt like we should take as much time as possible to talk to people who are coming here. Because honestly, like, I'm super excited to talk to them. I hope you are too, but you know, at the end of the day, I, I get, I'm the one who gets to ask the question, so I want to I keep all hour 15 minutes to myself. Um, thank you very much for coming to HandmadeCon. I, I am absolutely like shocked to see so many people here. And there was like a meetup last night at the uh, at, at Seven Stars Pepper, and uh, there's a couple other ones that people are organizing online. And I went there, and we took like a brief show of hands. It was like how many people traveled to get here, and it was like everyone. And people were like, "Yeah, I flew 22 hours to get here," and all that stuff. It's like what? I I do not know what to say other than thank you so much. Uh, for that, I mean, this is this is a, a, a $35 conference, and I don't even want to know how much it must have cost to get here <laughs> from some of those places. Uh, and so we will be doing our absolute best uh, to, to to make it worth your while. So I don't want to take very much time with introductions. So I'm just going to say really quickly. Uh, we are trying to record it, so hopefully there will be video afterwards. And we're trying to record both what's on the screen and what's coming, uh, you know, what's happening up here. So hopefully that'll uh, work out well, and we'll have stuff afterwards. The streams are what we could do uh, with what we had, so they may go down, they may not. If you're watching at home up there uh, on the on the stream, I apologize if it's a little spotty. It was it was the best we could do, but hopefully you'll be able to see everything after the fact at the very least. Um, and here's how this is basically going to work. I'm going to talk to each uh, programmer, and we're going to go through all the stuff that I want to know about the things that they're working with, and just kind of go in, in detail about like what they're working on, what they have worked on, like you know what their perspectives are on things, how how they approach coding, all that sorts of stuff. Uh, and I don't think we're going to be able to do time for questions during. We might, but I have a feeling we're going to like fill up all the time. So what I'd like to do is just say anyone who has a question that they think of that they would like answered. I will take all the questions on Twitter, so you can do at CMuratory and just tweet the question at me. I will gather them all up tomorrow, and then I will actually email everyone who we spoke to. And if they have time to answer some of them, I will, I will go back on stream. But I might filter. I might filter. So try to keep it just to programming questions, you know, not design questions or those sorts of things, because we try to keep it mostly to, to programming on Hammy Hero. So that's it for the, for the, uh, for the boilerplate. Uh, so you know, uh, I'd just like to get started. The first person we have uh, is, well, everyone knows this game. Everyone's played Super Meat Boy. Uh, so I, uh, I, that needs no introduction. But you may never have seen him in person. Tommy Refinis, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk a bunch about the controller stuff. But, uh, but before we get to that, uh, I kind of wanted to start off by saying I don't even know, really, much of the history of pre-Meat Boy. So pre -Meat I had a bunch of questions I want to ask about okay. Meat Boy. And the first thing I wanted to find out was, how do, you, how do we get to Meat Boy? Like, where, where are you in your life at the time when you're like, hey, what is, you know, we're going to do this project together, right? OK, so <clears throat> I'm sick, so. Well, not sick, but. Cough, cough, just as much. Yeah, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure everybody's got something to take home. You want to aerosol that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, back in 1999, 2000, um, there was a site called Newgrounds. Um, I think most people know about Newgrounds. I think. And uh, on Newgrounds, I made terrible, terrible flash games and terrible flash animations, and so did Edmund. And we sort of met up, and then uh, we both went our separate ways. Like, bef like. I went and got into web development stuff, uh, PHP crap, MySQL. I wrote real estate databases, which sound really boring, but really? that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So you know, like, okay. you know, Zillow. Yeah. And how they show everybody's listings. Yeah. That's actually called broker reciprocity. Okay. So that's a thing where every agent can uh, grab the listings and sell other agent stuff, and they get like percentages, blah blah blah, all that stuff. But the complicated, fun problem with that is all MLS systems are stupid, <laughs> and none of them are centralized. So okay. my first actual job, aside from little contract jobs here and there, was writing real estate database software that took like five different databases in Western North Carolina and integrated them into one searchable thing. That was my job. That was like when I was 20. And that was super fun. That's crazy. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. And it was, um, yeah, it, it, was, it was just uh, 
the, in, in Western North Carolina, they had just introduced it, and I was this new programmer, the only programmer at this little web place that was managed by this moron. And, uh, <laughs> oh you man. Know, this is being recorded. Yeah, no, he's a moron, and he knows he's a moron. <laughs> I'm not going to say okay. his, I won't say his name. I could say his name. No, no, it's up to you, man. His name's Blake Butler. You're never going to find him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that, that was my job, and that was sort of, uh, you know, my SQL PHP stuff. And during that whole time, I always was trying to make my little game engine. And um, never really, I, I had Flash, so that was mainly what I was making stuff in and trying to make like a game engine sort of things in Flash, just sort of tinkering around. But my day job was always just, you know, web stuff, this and that. And then uh, after that job, I moved to Charlotte. I was in Asheville. I moved to Charlotte and got a job at a place that was doing educational, like almost games, but they were like an educational portal. And that was just dealing with hundreds of thousands of users. So mainly my life was all database stuff and building applications for people, like, like teachers and stuff. So how do you get from that to, because Super Meat Boy is all written like in C++, yeah, right? Yeah, it's... So how do you get from that as what you were doing to like, I'm going to build <laughs> a whole game engine myself using none of these things, not using Flash, not using yeah. any of these, right? What, what did that process look like? How did that So happen? how that happened was, as I was doing all that work, I was doing a bunch of contract work. And um, I was doing stuff for like Duraflame and NASCAR. Like just, and I would just spend all my time doing all this work that was fun for my brain, but not for the creative fun part of my brain. Um, and one day, I was uh, reading an EGM and uh, Electronic Gaming Monthly. I don't even know if that exists anymore. But yeah. um, they did an interview with the guy that was coding the fishing mini game in Twilight Princess. And, okay. And he was doing it, actually it wasn't an interview with him, it was an interview about Twilight Princess, but they had this little thing. And the reason there was a fishing mini game in Twilight Princess is because this one programmer loved fishing. And in his off time, he made the fishing minigame. Okay. And I read that, and I went, I make shit for Duraflame. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. So around that time... Was my, this also because of your shared passion of fishing? Of that, fish, yes, of right. fishing okay. and my hatred of Duraflame. Duraflame. Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> Understood. They have a weird slogan, by the way, Duraflame. What is their slogan? Is that the log? That yeah, yeah. Like, it, like you put it in the fireplace and you light the log on fire? Yeah. It's but it's like, not really a log. It's like compressed post-process materials of some Yeah, kind. yeah. It's okay. a really stinky, like, gasoline yeah. log is okay. what it is. Right. But it works. It burns for a long time. But their slogan, when I saw it over Thanksgiving, it's something like, tonight's the night. <laughs> <laughs> It's something really weird, like, uh, okay, um, so. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, so okay. after, uh, my, my friend had gotten a Because nothing's more romantic than a, a, a giant hey, baby. gasoline, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like hey baby, that. let's pop that Duraflame and let's make some sparks, yeah. <laughs> That's how I met my wife, okay. it was over a Duraflame <laughs> log, yeah. So it works. <laughs> yeah. Good news. So. Uh, my friend had uh, got a job at a company in Amsterdam and was also managed by morons. This is a weird trend for me. That's management. Um, and uh, they needed a, a, a network programmer. And um, I hadn't done much C++ in a long time, like little bits here and there. And I did an interview with them, and I convinced them that I knew C++ well enough to get the job. All right. And so I learned a lot of C++ on the plane to Amsterdam. <laughs> And then I got there and learned more and more and more and was able to learn fast enough that they couldn't, they couldn't catch me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and from there, I was like network programmer, and then I worked up to like lead engine programmer because I, I just, it was, I wasn't, we weren't building our own engine. We were basically taking the Unreal 2X engine and porting it to 360. Got it. Which, 2X was terrible because it, it was a hack on Unreal 2. Okay. And then to take that to 360 was crazy. But okay. I was doing all these, like, uh, what was it, uh, command buffer optimizations okay. and all this stuff to make it, like, actually, they, oh my god, they had, <laughs> their artists have no concept of what hardware can do. Okay. So this was an Xbox 360, and they had models with fingernails that were model geometry and textures that were uh, four, it was like uh, 
four uh, four zero nine six by four like four thousand nine six. Well, for their face. Okay, there's no way to get the emotions. Yeah. Uh, without those. Yeah. I mean, you've seen the videos. Yeah. Right? But you need you need the fingernails are part of the acting. The emotions. the best part yeah. though is the characters were never more than this big on the screen. Uh, well, you know. And I, I had constant fights. The emotions with them. in there, even if you can't see it, it's it's yeah. coming out <laughs> yeah. through the. Yeah. 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 So like uh, IGN's like, oh, it was a great game, especially the fingernails. <laughs> oh my God, those were great. Fingernails ten out of. Did they add a new fingernails rating? I did a whole of? fingernail shader. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. Okay. But I, I, that's where I was like, I was all into like the optimization stuff. Okay, I was so you like, actually had a lot of time where you were doing C++ engine work. Oh yeah. So it was, okay. Yeah, like that, that was like my whole job was make sure this shitty game called Hoop World that okay. eventually came out, okay. but not on 360, uh, make sure, <laughs> 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 but make sure it runs at 60 frames a second. And that okay. was my job. And that was like, I, I was doing all sorts of fun stuff, like I was trying to figure out a way to make animation textures where it would encode the matrices in the texture and okay. use that in like instead of having like all the, uh, the, the shader constants and everything because those were like super slow going through and I'm like, well, if we just use this, and it didn't work, but, uh, it, did. <laughs> but it was but fun it was to do. Shot. Yeah, it was fun to do and it was like, I, that's how I was like learning about like optimizations and how like you know, how, how all this stuff sort of works together. And uh, that was my job for about 10 months until the company kind of went terrible. Um, and so this is, that's also 360 practice. I yeah, that was 360 okay. practice. So I was like super familiar with 360 hardware. Then quit that job and a friend of mine, uh, Aubrey, Aubrey Hesselgren, uh, he's a good guy. Uh, we started a game together. He was the lead designer on Hoop World, and I was a programmer. We started a game together where uh, there's a game called Goo, okay. which came out at the same time as World of Goo, which that's, yeah. yeah, yeah but okay, yeah. Uh, it was a very good game. Okay. World of Goo, not, not my game. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, World of Goo was amazing. My game was terrible. Okay. But it was um, super physics stuff. Okay. It was multi threaded physics craziness. Okay. And that was my, hey, let's have multi threaded fun. Okay. Kind, of, kind of time, and that's when I learned a whole bunch about threading, and um, that game kind of went nowhere. And then around that time, I was looking at IGF winners, because uh, Goo had gotten to the IGF, and I'm like, oh, cool, and I look through winners, and I see Gish, and I'm like, oh, because I, I have this thing where I have to like, see everything, oh, who made this, who made this, I'm okay. like, oh, Edmund made that. I'm like, cool, I'm like, I wonder if I still have him on uh, Instant Messenger, and like, I did, and we started talking, and then, you know, <clears throat> I went to Santa Cruz because we were going to do GISH 2 for 360, but that fell through. Okay. And then Meat Boy sort of happened. And by that time, I had the Goo engine. And then I was like, well, I'm going to revamp this because I always revamp stuff. So I'm like, well, I'll revamp this for Meat Boy. And then, yeah, from that, made the tile engine, made the tile editor, made all of the thingies for So that's it. kind of interesting. Like, I never knew that backstory, actually. So it's yeah. actually, it, it, that is kind of a, like almost a training montage, that whole thing. Pretty much. Right up to Super Meat Boy. <laughs> yeah. All the things that are like, you know, all the hard off, ships. And then, yeah, like, yeah. It turns out to be really useful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the big game. Uh, so let me ask about the Super Meat Boy then. Actually, I got to keep, I got to keep checking the clock so I know what times we're at. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that, uh, the, the whole tile editor stuff. I kind of wanted to ask a little bit about that, especially because this is something that, uh, that, that always is in my brain for some reason, right. which is, OK, so especially on something like Super Meat Boy, mm -hmm. right? you've got a situation where you guys weren't even in the same location. No, or, no, no. I was so, in North Carolina. You're, right, because you're separated. Yeah. yeah. So how did you guys go about figuring out that art process? Because you had, like, again, you've got your own custom engine, mm -hmm. right? He works in with whatever, whatever tools he works in. I guess Flash, Flash is yeah. what he normally uses, right? Yeah. And so for day, day one, OK, we should probably also turn off. <laughs> I didn't say silence your cell phones, because I normally don't actually care about that. But I should silence yeah, it yeah. right next to the See, microphone. See, now you know why they say it. Yeah. <laughs> Point being, yeah. you sit down, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you're like, we you know, need to start building this game. And maybe there were some decisions I guess you made from the previous game in terms of how art would come in. But like, you're going to work with Edmund. He needs to put all this content in. 
How, how did you like, work through that process? Was it iterative, or did you know up front what you needed? Like, give me some, give me some uh, sort of insight into if I'm in that situation, you just drop me in in place of you. Mm -hmm. what, what, is, like, what are all the things to think about and how you got an efficient way of like, implementing the, you know, did you do importers or exporters? Or how, you know, give me that whole thing. So um, my kind of philosophy about that and about working with any artist is you, the way you get the best work out of people is by giving them the easiest way to give you the best work. Okay. So when it came to Edmund, oh, <laughs> some applause. There are some people who approve wow, of okay. that philosophy. <laughs> well, oh. <laughs> um, so with Edmund, he works in Flash. And I was familiar with Flash. And my thinking was, because uh, at, at one point, before, like right before Ed, I'm like, I was trying to make some particle effects for goo. And I'm like, eh. You know, I can make a thing, and I'm just like, well, I'm basically just making Flash keyframing interface, but without all of the stuff of Flash, because Flash, for, for as terrible it is, as it is, it's decent in animation. Okay. Um, so with Ed, he only works in Flash, okay. and I was like, you know, why fight it? So um, Kyle Gabler, uh, World of Goo, had told me about, because uh, I, I, it came up in a conversation or something about how they did the art for World of Goo, okay. and Kyle Gabler uses Flash, and okay. he's like, well, they, Flash has this extendable uh, JSFL thing. It's like little Java files that can run in the IDE and just automate a bunch of process. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, so this is actually like a scripting system that's inside Flash. Yeah, yeah, it's called JSFL. It's still around. It's, um, this is a JavaScript thing that you you write, so it's, it's basically like the same as the ActionScript stuff. You, you write it in there. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's weird. You would think they would have just made it ActionScript, but it's a weird version of Java. Like a weird oh, version wait, of JavaScript. Action, oh, JavaScript. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. And then you can integrate that into uh, the, like the Java C libraries, so you can make like DLLs that load into the interface. It's really crazy. You can do a Whoa, ton with okay. it. So, so inside the Flash JavaScript, you can actually load a C DLL that you yeah. made externally. Yeah, and then you can call functions to it. And you can call functions to it. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, all right. So, wow. what I did. And you can, can you pass data in some way as well? Yeah. Like, so, you can actually sort of curry, get, get the flash information yeah. and pipe it out using this JavaScript shim. Sort of. Okay. Sort of. Okay, so this, this, is, where, this is where the craziness comes in. So, I, I wanted to have. Uh, well, what, what Kyle Gabler's thing did is it just basically took every symbol, because in Flash everything is a symbol, okay. and you know, the, it just took as just separate PNGs. And I'm like, that's cool, but you know, with a lot of the Meat Boy stuff, it's tiny, it's small. I don't okay. need a tiny PNG. Okay. I'm like, I need to make a good texture atlas. So what I did... Okay, so hold on a second for people who don't yeah. know all of that stuff. Yeah. So what you're saying is basically in the World of Goo pipeline, what they did is they literally took everything that the artist had made in Flash uh, and they output like each frame or whatever of every animation something like PNGs? that. Well, I don't think it was each frame because okay. uh, the animations themselves are like keyframed and there's like motion tweens and everything, okay. but like the actual symbols, like if he okay. drew a little goo ball and it needed to move, they okay. would export the goo ball and the animation. And the animation yeah. would separate things, okay. Yeah. And, and they, you wanted to do a texture atlas. I wanted to do a texture atlas and export the animations because the detail that we had and the things that we had and the amount of assets we had, it was better to have, you know, 10 texture atlases than 1,000 images or whatever. Okay, so you want to take all the symbols, yeah. you want to pack them into yeah. a big texture atlas yeah. that you can look up into or something, yeah. and then you want some metadata that tells you where everything was. And that's exactly what I did. Okay. So with, so, and you can't just like, you can't just pass that to C, you actually have to use the JSFL stuff to rearrange, well, this is what I did. Yeah. Everything that Ed would draw, it goes into the library. I would take, and the JSFL creates a new Flash document. It then takes everything out of the library and places it on the stage. Then it rotates and moves stuff so that they all fit into the smallest texture possible. Okay. Then I have all of the positions recorded. That goes into an index file. 
boom, that's my texture atlas. Now I go through each one of the symbols, and then I go and take all of the animation data, like sound calls, everything, and I have that in, in a separate file that gets piped out and then written to a file. So in Meat Boy, there were AM files. That was all the animation data. There were okay. ITX, which was the texture atlas index stuff. Okay. And then there was um, just the PNG. So every animation, every art asset is those three things, like all the cutscenes, everything. Are Go those. in there. Yeah. So, and that was an exporter that would run in the IDE, which was super inefficient for. It was great for like level stuff, but um, cutscenes it would take forever because it's literally the IDE is like, okay, uh, put this here, okay. put this here, export this, and it's like. Uh, the and that's running in interpreted JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the slowest possible. It's the slowest possible okay. thing doing the most possible work. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. And so yeah, that's how everything like the um, the that, very end cinematic would take about 14 minutes to export. Wow. Which was a pain in the ass. That's, I, I feel like that's uh, almost time to compile maybe a few of the files from the Unreal Engine. Yeah. Basically, yeah. <laughs> Just a few, not okay. too many. <laughs> um, so uh, here's a question for you. You're, you said that when you when you're putting out these, uh, you're making your texture atlas. Yeah. You actually sort of suggest you're you're jittering them to get a tighter packing than if they were just rectangles, basically. Yeah, I would, um, and I, I would only do 90 degree, you know, Flips. because that's. Yeah, it would been. Okay. <laughs> if you were trying to do more. Than, oh, this okay. is a 73 degree angle. Okay. Gonna, yeah, no, you don't want to do that, but. <laughs> Also, I don't think that would be very efficient. So did you, was, was, again, was that something that you, why did you feel like you needed to do that, right? Did you, te did you use just the standard rectangle kind of packing? Like, why did you feel like you needed better packing? Was this like, I just want it? Or was there a time when you were like, no, this isn't working because we have too many assets? So I'm a sick person. Um, and well, based on the drawing. Based on the drawing. Say, yeah, okay. Well, that, yeah. you can't prove that was a No, text. we can't. You can't prove that was a I think it was streamed. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, when, but like the first one I did was, yeah, all these little rectangles. I'm like, that's cool, but there's a lot of white space. And okay. I'm like, I can definitely, in my head, because at my learning station job, okay. I made a calendar program okay. that you could ca like, um, have little appointments, and it would fill them in and Lego them together. And I I'm see. like, I can just do that again and make it all like smashed together and as, as efficient as possible. And, yeah, we didn't really need it, but okay. uh, it was fun to do, <laughs> and uh, it worked out. <laughs> so, yeah, that was kind of why I was like, okay, well, we definitely need to be able to move this, like, 90 degree, 90 degree puzzle, Tetris them all <laughs> into this thing. So that was purely just to, to satisfy your own OCD. You oh, yeah, like, no, this I, I post space is <laughs> driving me nuts. I posted pictures of it because I was super proud of it because it okay. looks like it looks like it's definitely a computer did it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what looks so cool about it. So uh, let's let's jump a little bit forward in that process then. Mm -hmm. So after we've got all this stuff exported and we have, you know, this, these sort of uh, files that in, that encode whatever the flash animation, yeah. the markup for the texture atlas, we've got that. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, we've got to build a game, yeah. right? And so flash doesn't really allow us to probably do enough stuff that we need to do for that. So no. you said you, you built the letter and stuff. Talk about how did you guys figure out how that piece was going to work? Like, how did you figure out how you were going to, like, assemble the game out of flash pieces? Because there's always a bunch of things, like, how much do we do in the the uh, in Flash versus how much do we do in the level editor? Like, yeah. was that an iterative process? Give me a little bit of, of, of just sort of the overview. So, of how did that go? And, and was it just we did the first thing and we just used it, or did we have to iterate? Like, how did that go? It was actually kind of we did the first thing and then used it. So what happened was, in my thinking, I was like, Ed's going to do all the animations in Flash. Everything animation-wise, everything cutscene, everything menu, that's going to be somehow in Flash, and okay. I'm going to hook all that stuff to my engine code. So when it came to like the level editor, um, I wrote the fl I wrote a basic tile editor first. You know, click here, here's a tile, blah blah blah. Okay. At that point, that's like done. You know, that's your collision. That's the because the tiles themselves were just PNGs that Ed made in okay. Photoshop. That was the only thing he used Photoshop for was just making the the little art for the tiles. Um, and and then is it that actually was, strictly tiles? Are they always little squares? Yeah, they're always little. Okay. Well, there's little square little. Triangles and stuff, little this tiny squares. This is the international. Yeah, symbol international for symbol for you know, the little a triangle. triangle. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we had all those little shapes, and I made the editor to just be able to place shapes and have a collision and have <laughs> basically a PNG of Meat Boy just bop around. 
Then I made the animation stuff, the animation exporter, and then I spent some time making sure that integrated in because everything was from Flash. So, like the saws, the saws were animated in okay. Flash to spin around because Ed animated them in Flash to spin around, so they might as well spin around the same way that he animates them in Flash in the editor. So, everything outside of tiles and was Flash, with the exception of um, the editor had a way to do waypoints. So like okay. if you had like a missile turret and you wanted to move up here and here, well you couldn't do that in Flash, okay. but you know, you could say here and at this time be here, at this time be here and then loop back. So that was the only like animation stuff that was in the editor, which a lot of people with the Super Meat World stuff made some pretty crude stuff <laughs> with that, <laughs> which was pretty funny. <laughs> so what do, like when you say collision, mm -hmm. so you've got two different types of things in there. You've got the Flash, objects, yeah. and you've got the, the PNGs coming from Photoshop that are tiles, yeah. right? Is that just like, are, are you doing, how are you doing collision there? Is a tile just like a solid rectangle collision, or is it like actually the bitmap collision, or like what did you, and then oh, for the flash just... objects, what was the collision there? Like how, how did that stuff? So the collision in the flash objects, I made, I had, uh, in all of Ed's libraries, I had a bounding circle and bounding square. And if he would put those in, Okay. What the editor, or was it the editor or the exporter? One of them would basically mark it as this is a bounding square, and it's it would okay. use the width of the containing movie clip as the you know the 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 diameter of the circle or the width of the square. So like if I okay, like so, it would be so a he circle. didn't actually place the square in the circle. He just said this is a no, square. No, no, no. He circle. placed them, he and then them. and then would move them to the correct. I and see. then. Uh, the engine would take those and be like, oh, well, don't render this yes. and make a bounding circle there and tie it to this. Okay. So, and then that, that gave him the power to be like, oh, this, you know, this saw, it's a little too big or something. And I'm like, well, fix it. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't care. You fix it. Like, you shrink it. I don't need to shrink it. So, and that, that offloaded, you know, okay. the little nitpicky work on him yeah. because he can change it easier and faster and test it than I can change it, give it to him, test it. You know, that, we just cut out the middleman there and let him place all of that kind of so he, collision So all the, the collision meat boy is basically squares and circles. Or squares and circles for the objects and then tile is just your basic tile collision. So tiles are like, they're always a rectangle. They're, yeah, they're, they're a rectangle the or whatever the tile shape is. So they're a rectangle, like half rectangle or there was a, uh, because it was, you have the tile, which is the image, and then you have the actual model, which is either the square or the triangle. And okay. then from there, then it would, it would treat it as a triangle. At, at so that you actually place have like underlying shapes yeah. that would then, okay. And so then all these things come into the collision system, and, the, and then they just flow through naturally in yeah. that way. And the editor is basically the thing, either it came from Flash and was marked up there, or the editor said, this tile is a triangle shape. Yeah. That goes to the okay. Yeah. So how did you deal with like the, you know, uh, I guess the, the binding between these things? So you have all these flash files and that sort of stuff, and, and I want to make one of these like, you know, uh, the, like you said, the sort of the, the spinning saw blade or something yeah, yeah. like that. And I want to put that in there. So what does that look like for Edmund? You know, he's oh, building yeah. a level or something like that. Like how, yes. and, and what's the iteration like that? Because you said like you had to go back to flash, maybe you change the collision sizes. Like mm -hmm. how, did, how did all that work out? Was, so, it, was it good? Was it, was it trick, you know? No, that actually worked out pretty well okay. because that was a, um, because uh, you had, you, you know, you have the forest, you have the hospital, you have the, the salt factory. Um, each one of those was a set of, um, like, uh, a flash file for a uh, flash file for all the objects, flash file for all the like set pieces that have like your trees, your waterfalls. Um, a flash file for little animals like the squirrels and okay, stuff. Okay. So all those would uh, be pl placed in a a file that I just called a palette, and he okay. would it would be like. Oh, object is this .am file, okay. uh, you know, set piece is this, and it kind of went down through all that. So and all he would do... remembered the .am file name, <clears throat> like the file name. Yeah, yeah. Is, is it would binding. just load that, yeah. It would just load that in because he would, like in the editor, he would be like, all right, I want to make a forest level. So he would load up forest.lp, which was level palette. He would load that up. That would take and grab his objects, his tile sheet, his... Uh, basically everything he would need for that level. So then, like, if he did have to go back and change a saw or adjust, or if he wanted to add a set piece, he would go to, like, set piece, the FLA, okay. put it in, re-export, then he would just load up the level, scroll through, and there's his, his new thing. And is that, like, wait, so did the files ever contain more than one placeable object at a time then? The... Meaning, meaning like, so I have these flash files, 
and they're coming up in this palette. Oh, do I, I see. reach into the flash file export, the exported flash file? Uh -huh. Do I reach in there and grab out a particular element of it so that there's like a double binding? There's the we have to remember like okay, there's a file name that it corresponds to and like a sub name inside of it. Yes, how, how it was based on work? an ID. So okay, so if if he was uh, and it was all done with mouse wheel, so he would have like a. Uh, like he would go through the set piece. He would just like scroll through. Those would have unique IDs placed to them, and they were according to how they were layered in the FLA file. Okay. So he would have to place new stuff at the top, so that okay. yeah, and and that worked out well. All like right. when when the index would mess up, I, he was like, hey, it's not working. I'd be, did you place it at the top? And he's like, no. no way. Yeah, and then oh my God. He, he would place it at the top and then re-export, and then it would be fine because okay. the level. The actual level files had just all the used. indexes in there. I see. And then it would just like load the indexes from the animation thing. Okay, so, so it's yeah. straight up like a file name plus a number. File name plus a and number. And the numbers equals... had better line up Edmund. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah, because he had two different uh, you had the animation file which had the IDs of the animations, then you had the index file. So if he because I made it so he could do either a full export, which would take forever, or just a texture export. So if he wanted to okay. change how this tree looked, instead of exporting everything, he could just export the texture. But if he exported the texture and not the animation file and happened to add something, then everything the was wrong. just wrong. Did this cause a lot of problems in development? No. Or not that bad? <laughs> no, no, like one or two times. Okay. And he's like, oh, because it was easy, because it was all in the Flash IDE form. Okay. He would just literally, like, it was in the drop down for commands in Flash. Okay. So he would just doot, doot, done, okay. Doot, doot, done. Okay. So yeah, I made it, made it pretty easy on him. So uh, let's. Um, all I, that stuff is caveman stuff now compared to what I have. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, what what I made hit me. So okay, so so you you felt like that was not that was stupid. I hated the exporter so much. <laughs> All right, so what did you change? Going I, I made it just read SWF files. Like, oh, it, it renders oh. vectored SWF files animations, reads all of the sounds from the SWF files. So all you have is an SWF file. That's so it. what did you do? Like, did you reverse into it, or did you go get, like, a Flash? I downloaded the, uh, the Flash, uh, the SWF uh, file spec from Adobe, and I read it. No. Yes. <laughs> That's what I did. That's right. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah. And that was super fun uh, because now uh, I can make anything. Like, <laughs> it's so it's so insane because it went from oh god we got to spend like 14 minutes exporting this to oh well just here's the SWF and then it just renders and it's fine and it's all like it's all vector so it can be any size any you know oh it's great. So uh, I guess let me ask the question then since I was kind of interesting about interested about how you're doing the layout before. Mm -hmm. So now that you've moved to an SWF file, you're reading it directly. Again, how do you deal with the whole, like, I've got these in-game tools. They need to reference the stuff from the SWF. And the artist just you know, outputted a bunch of SWF files. Yeah. How are you doing that binding now? Did you change the way you're doing it? Or is it still name and index? It's, um, so now what it is is now, instead of a level palette and all those things, now it's just the SWF. And inside the SWF, you have clips on the main stage. So you have a clip <clears throat> called set pieces. You have a clip called objects. You have a clip called parallax. And what it does, what the editor does is it takes the SWF, looks for those specific things, and then just makes a big giant database. And then you have your indices to, like, if this is a set piece, you know, you, you hit this movie clip, and then you render this index from inside that, the uh, set piece. Hold on. Inside the set piece, if there's you need a, the drawing. We yeah, have yeah. The drawing. Inside the set piece, Here. yeah, I'll, I'll, so I'll draw. So this guy, if you push down that one, you can scroll with oh, it. Oh, okay. So if you need more space. Yeah, neato. I'm gonna draw a dick like immediately. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say really this. like the, the the degree of lewd drawings that we're gonna happen on Handmade Hero. I oh, guess you, we just get them all out right you now were, in your yeah. You weren't at my wedding. My <laughs> wedding, our guest book was draw your best dick. And there are some amazing ones there. You probably had a lot of good artists. Yeah. At the oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ben, that's gonna be that's gonna be like a collect, that's gonna be the Smithsonian someday. Yeah. No, like, I, I certainly hope so. You know, so. you know, collection after the bombs like drop. The dick d yeah, yeah. After all the bombs drop. Yeah. And we're going through the Commonwealth. Yeah. And there's like, they go into this thing. And there's just this this in this house. There's just yeah. this picture of these two dicks yeah. kissing. Yeah. yeah. We can rebuild society. Yeah. Now we know what it was. We about. know what we yeah. know what it was like before the bombs. 
All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so continue. Uh, you can see why I'm not an artist, because that's the best square I can make. It's beautiful, man. Yeah. Uh, so let's say, oh, oh boy. Why is it? Is it's it? the, it's, no, it's just that, this, this button. Oh, the button yeah, see, I'm, I'm like yeah. fat fingering it. Yeah. yeah. All right. See, we gotta, we, you gotta work on your art skills, man. You gotta know how to use a Wacom tablet. Okay, I didn't mean to draw a face, yeah, but no, I did. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say this is, this is, that's O for obstacle. I'm still drawing a face. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is S for set pieces, okay. and this is P for parallax. Okay. okay. Now, uh, this is our SWF. Okay. Okay. Uh, that loads into the engine through this little arrow here. <laughs> okay, in what universe was that an arrow? I don't know. I can't. It's weird. I need it to be flat. It's like, hello, we are, we are the beings that only have blocks. <laughs> <laughs> so that gets, that gets it's, loaded in. It's wonderful. In. Yeah, I know, this is great. So that we gets loaded it. in, and basically, if you, if you want to think about these as, these are all little databases. Okay. And each one, inside of each what one are, of what these... What are they keyed on? Each, in, inside of each one, if you look in the FLA, there you have your layers, if, for people that are familiar with Flash. Um, and like, this would be like a tree. Like, the, the, I can't. It's just that button, man. You just can't push the button. Tree. But okay. let's say you have tree and this and that, and those are just like, it doesn't base it off names or anything. It's okay. literally based off where it is in the like drawing hierarchy in the FLA file. So okay. if the tree is at the very top, that's like, that's like the, the last index. The very bottom is zero, and this is n, okay? Okay. So, and this is literally just it, the draw order, meaning what they set up as like the overlap. Yeah, hierarchy yeah. Because in Flash. Uh, if you're doing if you're doing Flash correctly and you don't have everything all piled on one layer, okay. you know, you have everything on separate okay. layers, okay. and that that naturally just forms a database. So okay. that that's kind of the structure of let's say parallax or whatever. Okay. And then when the engine loads in this clip, and when you say parallax, you mean the background. Oh yeah, like the little the thing, little right? background things okay. that you can, and it doesn't matter because right. you know, it's just z-axis. Okay. I know 2D people are afraid of z-axis, but it's helpful. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so when you, when you load those in, it, the engine just basically goes through and just loads all of these clips okay. because it, it doesn't care and it doesn't know what's on the layers. It just knows this is, this is, uh, I, this is child one in parallax clip. This is child two, child three, child four. So inside the engine, when I load in this parallax thing, I go, okay, these are all my parallax things. This is, these are their, their indices. So, and actually, I don't even load the things themselves because they load when they're only needed. So it's on demand. Yeah, so okay. when, when the, when so the, the level's SW like... So the SWF file, you basically parse like the header of it or something. Or I the parse, I, yeah, I parse everything because uh, in the engine, that's how the SWF files work is I don't want to actively tessellate everything right. right then and there. Because the tessellation's so quick, I can do it at load time and okay. nobody knows because okay. it's just there. Um, so when I go through and I load these, I have like just an internal database and when, when he's scrolling through the mouse or when the artist is scrolling through the mouse and they like see a little parallax they want and they place it, then the level, that's a level. It's a uh, pretty good level. Yeah, no, it's really good. Here, I'll, I'll decorate it. Look at that. That's a cliff. There's a tree. <laughs> yeah, so when he clicks and places this tree right here, like that's let's let's just say that's that's number zero, okay. and it also has a sub ID because it needs to tell it that it's in parallax. So it's got a okay. sub ID. Let's say parallax is three because okay. I actually think it is three. So now those are hard coded in the engine, I assume. Like parallax is three. Yeah, is parallax three. is three. This one and is, those are by name in the SWF. So meaning the engine first looks at the SWF. It yeah, goes, engine looks. Here's for, my my obstacle layers. My what did you, what did you say the S was? Uh, that's set pieces. Like set it looks pieces. for my set piece clip, my uh, object clip, and my parallax clip, okay. and then everything inside those clips are all the objects, all, all the parallax, all the everything. Got it. And so does this, this would then have the same problem as the existing one, whereas if they change the order of things yes. in that folder, so you're still going to tell Edmund, you got to put yeah. it at the top. Yeah. However, uh, because it doesn't take 14 minutes, he just moves it and it hits publish, and then okay. two seconds later, he, he has it. It's so why aren't those by name instead of by number? Is it because the names, the artists don't want to set names? Or what, <laughs> what was, like, like, tell me a little bit, because you, you, you went by name for, you know, for, for, ooh, 
for this guy up here. My right? thinking, this is by yeah. name, but this guy down here is not. My thinking is because these are all hard coded into the engine. You're not going to have anything extra because these are going to be your objects, your set pieces, your parallax, your special okay. like bandage girl or yeah. your, your band aids or stuff like that. You're only going to have these set things, and these are going to be things that I actively want to see because it's not an editor like Unity where he can actively go, hey, I want to load in Sunshine Clip and then okay. Sunshine Clip comes in and okay. that's a whole different thing because okay. the levels are themselves are structured like any level for any tile game. You're going to have tiles, you're going to have, okay. uh, you know, obstacles, you're going to have enemies. Like those are all the things you're going to have. And then adding those actually to the editor is just as easy as like, okay, look for this clip. This is this clip. This is this sub ID when you, and then with the editor now, you can bind a button to a mode and then be able to place whatever you want. So it's like, the, the thinking was, these are always going to remain static. These are always going to be random because they're, they're not, he's going to like add 10 different trees or five and different you just, trees. You, like him naming them tree zero, tree one, tree two. Wouldn't is, do is, any good because okay, I still have to go through and like I would actually have to know the names at that point because I run everything based on numbers, like little, like the, the indexes and everything. And it makes more sense for me to just go, okay, here, this, this tree, I don't care that it's a tree. I just care that it's uh, index zero for a uh, clip or clip database three. Well, so I'm assuming though, I'm just, and sorry to belabor this because I'm curious. No, cool. So I am assuming that here, you know, we could you draw have- draw way better squares than I do. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm classically trained. Mm. I, I went to square school. I went oh. to this, I'm sorry, I went to the square conservatory. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> where we studied drawing we, squares. We studied over squares, and over yeah. And over again, yeah. My, I, my hands still shake a little bit because there's very strict teachers. And, um, <laughs> So uh, I, we could introduce here, like, you know, if this, if this is our SWF file, right? Uh -huh. We could introduce a table here that's like, OK, the last time I S imported this thing, like, index 0 was like the tree or something, and index 1 was whatever. And it stores the string, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so then the next time you load it in, it would look at the names and go, oh, tree moved. It's like it's down here now, but I found right. it, and I remapped it. But you. You don't seem interested, even, I would say, no. in, in these strings. And so I just want to just know specifically, like, do you think it's just not worth the time? Do you think the yeah. artists just don't name them anyway? Or what's, well, that's, like, how does that? That's the thing. Uh, so I, I never thought of it as, like, I want them to name because the, the integrity of this database needs to always be consistent. Okay. Because it doesn't. Because okay. it's easy to fix. Okay. So, and, right. and with Flash just being able, because it's literally like, oh, if tree's here and it's supposed to be there, you just drag and drop, publish, done. Okay. And for me to do this little part, that introduces like a level of complexity where it's like, okay, well, now for some reason, the tree's up here, and this was zero, but it was this back before, and it's just... Okay, that's really interesting. Yeah, so for me, it's just like, I don't care what's in here. As long as okay. I give it to the artist, and if he's like, I want to add a billion things, and if he knows to add them at the top, he can add a billion things in like 20 minutes, and then they're just in the editor. Whereas Got if it. he had to go through and name them and all I this see. stuff, then it's like... And then, yeah, artists don't name anything. That's at least Ed doesn't. He would name stuff... And it was so irritating in Meat Boy. He would name stuff X X X X X X X X X X one. Well, that's to the and that was a tree. But that's how you know the difference between that and X X X X X X X. Yeah, and then and then he then it was no, it wasn't X anymore. It was that was the name of it. Okay. And I'm like, this is useless. This is totally useless. So like to take. Like, it doesn't need to have a name because it's just, it's these things. And like, when you think about the end, end product, if you want to say, yeah. the end product of this level, that's always going to be a tree until he goes into the editor and changes it. Like, yes. or unless he messes up the order here. But and if so you mess would, up the order, you can fix it super quick. So, would w one way to state that be like, you come down on the side of, look, they either have to get a bunch of names to yeah. not collide with each other, or they have to keep the indices in order. I don't really think there's a bonus to this one, so yeah. why not remove that from the process? Basically, we, yeah. Because they're all going to be in order. Some I, I order actually, anyway. yeah, I okay. actually think it's easier to just be like the, the rule be at the top. At the top. Yeah, okay. you know, instead of name it. Name it. Yeah. That's really fascinating, actually. Okay. And it, it made okay. like it, it works. Yeah, I like it. All right, so I think that's, uh, that's pretty good for, for art pipeline stuff. Okay. I, uh, that, that was actually really interesting. Um, but uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the controller stuff. 
And so I'm just keeping an eye on time here. So I think I wanted to switch over to that, if that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to talk about the control stuff for Super Meat Boy. A, because it's like way far out of anything I ever do. Like I've never worked on controller code for, uh, you know, for an action game or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, and also because you know, it, it's, it's pretty universally accepted as a very good example of doing the controls right. Uh, and so I kind of wanted to get like, you know, to start off with, what was the process like for doing that, right? Like, did you, was it, were the controls great from day one? Did you iterate constantly? Was there playtesting? Like, give, give me a little overview before I start asking questions about the actual code. <laughs> so, the way, the way I approach it is I'm very uh, bitchy okay. when it comes to controls. Okay. I, I hate bad controls. They ruin everything for okay. me. It's terrible. Um, so, before I made Art Pipeline and after I made Place Tiles, okay. I worked on uh, movement. Okay. And the way I did that is I knew, because the Flash version does not have good controls. And I, oh. would, I, I threw that, I didn't even look at it. I okay. threw that out. Okay. I knew he had to jump and wall jump, and that's what I, that's what I went by. All right. So for about three months, um, because that was the first controller game I made too. I didn't oh, do okay. anything in Hoop World for controls. Okay. Uh, Goo was just basically a mouse game. Okay. So that was the first time like good, good control. Well, actually, you could use the controller in Goo, but it was like it was different. You just move a thing around. You know, you're not actively, yeah. So, okay. what I what I did for that was I made I made a simple tile uh, editor level editor thing where I could just place some tiles and and my little Meat Boy square because he was still just a square at that point. Um, the little red square uh, could just run around and like wall jump and stuff. And what I did for about three months is I tweaked it. And the way I tweaked it was I would play through it and I would make specific situations where it would be this is a one tile block and this is a one tile block. I want to be able to wall jump from this one tile block and land on top of this block. Got it. So what I, what I did, and it was two prongs, so it was a lot of iteration, but I also made, um, there are no physics formulas in Meat Boy. It's okay. all just garbage. So it's, it's completely hand coded. Every formula is I mean, there's gravity, right. but there's this thing called air friction. Okay. You know. There's real friction in the air. Yeah, yeah, but air not friction. like this. Not the, there's, there's, there's air turn friction. They haven't found all the fundamental particles That's yet, true. necessarily. Yeah. You don't know what could <laughs> this be. This is high level quantum yeah. shit we're talking about, okay? <laughs> um, so I had all these variables because, like, as I was playing through, and this is how, like, a thing like air friction would come up is be like, okay, I can jump, but I don't like how if I want to go back this way, if I'm just doing it force-based and I'm just going like, oh, just add to the force just until he goes yeah. back, I don't like that. Okay. So I would be like, well, I want like a multiplier if I'm going okay. back this way in the air, and that became air friction. Okay. And then I made a form like in-game where I could change values in-game and then test it. So okay. Meat Boy is a combination, like Meat Boy controls are a combination of garbage formulas okay. that don't make any physical sense okay. and garbage variables that have no bearing in reality. Okay. So it's just knobs. So in <laughs> yeah. some sense, uh, the process was create an obstacle course, sort yes. of, right? In other words, Various come up with obstacle things courses. I want yeah. to be able to do yeah. well, yeah. right? And then sort of start with some formulas, because I guess you made, so, so how did you pick the initial set? I mean, you just like, because it's, it's an iterative process, you got to yeah, start yeah. somewhere. Yeah, it was, a, the, it was just, uh, you know, velocity he runs, okay. jumps, and then gravity. And okay. then, you know, run, you didn't really have to change run, you just change the speed of run. But it was okay. all about like, jump and air control was the, the crazy thing. Well, change the speed of run, I mean, it's, it's got some acceleration, like Meat Boy doesn't immediately go he full has, speed, right? I think so, he so has you, two frames. <laughs> like, it's, okay. it's insane because, okay. and I remember, I actually remember that during the process, I'm like, if there's a saw firing down at me, I need to get out of the way. I don't want to, okay, okay. and since he's got air friction and all this crap, why can't he just instantly okay. <laughs> accelerate? Okay. So, so that, that was, that was kind of how that went. It was just, it was just like, have some basic movement, and then, like you said, like obstacle course and everything, and with that sort of iteration, it made... Like once, once those controls got like perfect, where I could make basically anything I wanted and, and in some way like figure out how to get up there yes. or over there. Once I could do that, then it was like, these are the controls. That took about three months. That's an impressively, like that, that's a, 
I, I guess I say is looking at the final game, yeah. that's kind of interesting to hear because that to get to those controls, you really did have to do the work. Like it was not just like, I don't know, sat down. Well, I mean, yeah. it was, it was a was lot of cool. like dartboard yeah. and then like, oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know what the units for air mm. tourney friction right, are. Right, you right, right. No for, for meat. What's the meat, meat air meat turn friction? friction yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't know the units for that. But uh, okay. um, well, the interesting part of that, though, was once those controls got in place and Ed started building levels, we found more stuff we could do through the level okay. design. There's something called an S jump. Okay. And the way the S jump works is really kind of crazy because you can jump and do this and actually get slightly higher than if you were to jump and do that. Okay. Uh, but it feels correct because okay. of how weird you control in the air. Okay. So you can S jump and go into these little tiny crevice things where you couldn't possibly go over if you were to just wall jump out. And that was all attributed to just air control, air friction. And you didn't tune for the S jump. You, the S jump was just S -jump jump like, came in. Because you made all these weird formulas, there are certain like holes, like I shouldn't say holes, but like optimal places in the formulas where if you just do the right sort yes. of things, you can get a little extra <laughs> yeah, out of you them can, because you can like, not physically correct. You can like maneuver into yeah. these things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's and those those became like super special. And they they are totally wrong, but they feel super correct because of how everything sort of flows in anything. It's not, oh, coded so you can do an S jump, because right. that would be a very yeah. this thing. It's a, you know, it's, it's, it's more natural. And because of that, it feels, it just feels like it is part of the controls. Like, it was meant to be that way. And so how, like, what are, what's an example, and it's probably something that's hard to remember exactly what it was, but like, so the fundamental quantities that you're tracking from frame to frame for the control scheme, mm -hmm. what do those look like, right? Like, you know, you said velocity, position, are there more, like, are there things, you know, and how are you looking at the stick? Like, what's the, what does the, the sort of, like, state, the input space look like, kind of, as we're going, as we're going through this? Yeah, well, uh, I'm trying to, so I don't remember exactly like everything that I, I, I know I like kept the velocity and his jump height and everything because there was a thing where if you tap jump, he'll jump one tile, okay. even if you let go, because it okay. feels weird to jump and only do like that. Right, right. It feels better to jump and do like that. Okay. Or if you hold it, jump and go like that. So there's some thresholding in there that's there, like, you'll like never jump less than this amount. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And that, that made it for, it just feels more consistent yes, that way. Yes. Because your, your mind and your finger, they don't always, they're yes. always at the same, yeah. you know, same speed. Um, as far as like looking at the controller and everything, um, yeah, I was just, uh-oh. That, that Did I hit good. something? I don't know. Well, this drawing's just got a lot yeah. better. <laughs> well, well <laughs> HDMI, no signal. Yeah. Keep talking, I'll take a look at, just make sure we didn't lose any plugs here. So, yeah, as far as like looking at the controls, yeah, I don't, I don't even really, I don't even really know. I mean, it was such a weird, like the way I built the controls in was I, everything in the engine is abstracted because I come from Unreal Town where they abstract, they abstract everything like to a crazier degree than I do. So like when I built the engine, I built something that could be ported, okay. and like that's that's what it's that's what I prided on. It's okay. like I ported, I may I ported Meat Boy in a weekend to PS3. Oh, like wow. okay. you know that's and it's because of how I structured everything. So like with the controller, um, it's all you know it's X input for this, it's this for yeah. that. Um, so you have your X input, your X input talks to uh, like an input layer, which I just recently changed because I didn't like the name of it. Um, because that's what you just, do. Just the name. Yeah, well, the I didn't. name was the only thing you didn't like. I didn't like the name and I didn't like how it was set up. All right. So um, I changed all of it. Okay. But uh, it's better now. Um, <laughs> so that talks to like the input layer that is like, that just basically gives you, I, I have a thing in the engine where you can use like the, left and right stick as D-pads, which is okay. the easiest thing in the world, because it's just, you know, if, if you're more this way than this way, you're going left. If you're more this way than this way, you're going up. So yeah. it's, it's actually digital? Yeah. Is, are the controls for Meat Boy digital always? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so actually all of the analogness comes from, you know, how long you've pushed, yeah. never how hard you push. Yeah, no, no, no. On no, no. every platform? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> well, I was asking about what sort of quantities you track there. So you've got, you, it sounds like you've got D-pad in. So you've got, yeah. you've got basically like a directional Yeah, left, right, up, down. Left, right, yeah, up, down. Yeah. And you've got the buttons. Yeah, I got uh, the buttons. And so at that, at that stage, 
I guess what I'm trying to ask is, from frame to frame, mm -hmm. are these, you know, you've, you've got a bunch of sort of pseudo-physics formulas that yeah. you've been working on that you tweaked. Yeah, yeah. Are, is there carryover beyond just some quantities like velocity and position? Are there other things that needed to get tracked? Like, oh, how long has he been holding down the button? And we do some stuff with well, that. Well, there was that like, how for... Does, do you remember any interesting things about that? that oh, actually, not, yes. Not, uh, that wouldn't be the first thing you'd think of. Yeah, that so that's actually a really good one. And it's the best part, because it's the part nobody realizes, okay. but they all do it. Okay. And it was something I discovered during the three months of okay. craziness. Okay. Um, wall jump has a 200 millisecond leeway okay. of if you press, if you're on a wall and you press off the wall, it's not going to immediately take them off the wall. Because okay. in your brain, when you first play Meat Boy, you want to jump off the wall and go the direction. Okay. But a lot of the times, you'll either do direction first, okay. or you'll do it at the same time. Okay. And if you do it at the same time, he detaches from the wall, and then he just falls and straight down. Okay. So that 200 milliseconds makes it so anybody can, like, you're, it's, it's long enough that it's like, oh, I, I push to the left, and I jump to the left, and it feels right. But it's short enough that it's not like, I'm trying to get off the wall, and I can't get off the wall. So he actually sticks to the wall. He doesn't come off the wall, but you still allow them to jump for 200. No, no. He actually sticks for 200. Yeah, I had a thing like that, and okay. I hated it, because okay. it felt weird, and it was just bug prone. So I'm just okay. like, well, he'll just stick for just a tiny amount of time. OK, so if you start pushing off the wall, there's actually like a counter yeah. that's going to start incrementing at that point, or mm -hmm. decrementing, or however you did it in there. But yeah, yeah. Something's going to count up to 200 milliseconds over the frames. Yeah. And if you let go you know, at some point there, he'll just do the standard falling or whatever. But yeah. if you push the button during that time, off yeah. he goes. Yeah, and then he, he okay. jumps off. Was yeah. there anything else like that? Like, how about edge roll off? Like, as I'm going towards an edge and I'm going to do a jump, do you get some time after? Or I've does actually that that? never, uh, never been a fan of that. Okay. And and no, Meat Boy doesn't have that. Um, I had that in a prototype I was making for a, a different type of game, and I didn't find it all that useful. Oh really? Like, okay. I don't know. I I don't know if that's in other games, but I always felt like in Meat Boy, may, maybe it maybe it has to do more with the game because even though there are, you know, there's this gap right here. And you, in order to make the jump, you have to literally jump right yeah. here. But those situations in the game aren't that common because it's not like a life or death thing. You can jump and then maybe hit the wall and jump off. So you can like okay. compensate for yourself. So maybe that's why it never. It just wasn't designed to make right at the edge jumping the, the yeah, most important it, thing. So it wasn't like a Mega Man thing where you have yeah. two pixels and okay. either you make it or you die. Okay. And because in in that thing, and that's. You know, with, with Mega Man, you would jump and you would hit this wall. But in Meat Boy, you hit the wall and then you can just jump off and right, right. jump and go right yeah. back on top. Yeah. So I think that's, that's why I didn't actually use anything like that in there, because it just seemed unnecessary. So. so at the end of this three months, you've got, you've got the wall sticking. I'm assuming that's part of the three months process was the yeah. 200 millisecond wall stick. You've got the fake physics formulas, mm -hmm. uh, refinous physics, you yeah. know, the, the <laughs> Ref refinous model. Reftonian. Right, yes, yes Reftonian <laughs> dynamics. Yeah, yes. There we go. <laughs> Uh, so we got Reftonian dynamics in there. <laughs> uh, how much did those change over the course of the game? Did you literally stay with exactly as it was in the three months, or was there tuning that happened after as you, you know, get through the game more? Uh, what no, was it? No, they stayed that way the entire exactly. time. Exactly. So what and shifts there is basically exactly the same as the end of the three months. Yeah, yeah. The, the controls at the end of the three months were the same as the ones that were in the final game. And the reason is because at the end of the three months, Ed started making levels. Okay. And when he started making levels, like, the, 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 the thing that makes Meat Boy great is the controls complement the level design, and okay. the level design complements the controls. Okay. So if the level design was terrible and the controls were good, the game would still be terrible. If okay. the level design was amazing and the controls were terrible, the game would be terrible. Okay. But because Ed worked in the limitations of those controls, he made levels that complemented those controls. Okay. And that's why they never change, because to change them would mean to Effectively have to change. revisit all the yeah. other levels because okay so basically uh, part of the philosophy for the game almost was that like we kind of have to fix these controls at this because yeah. everything we design from here on is going to be based on exactly what this is not just sort of what this is yeah and that's okay. when I was when I was doing the control stuff I'm like well if we have to change these this is going to suck because yeah. it's just totally good because in the goo game beforehand I had to change controls all the time because. Okay. You're, you're controlling, that's what goo was, it was just controlling these big globs of stuff, and you tried to envelop other globs of stuff. 
And that as a control scheme on a controller is terrible. Okay. <laughs> so a lot of the time I had to try to redesign controls and every time I did, I'm like, yeah, this is a little better, but I don't like it. So in Meat Boy, I'm like, well, this is pretty cut and dry. He has to wall jump, he has to jump, he has to run. I, these need to be right first and then we can build on that. And then as long as the levels are good, the controls will remain good. Okay. So. So just want to ask, I think we've got time, I just want to make sure I've, I'm not ready. Yeah, okay, we've got, we've got a few more minutes. All right. Uh, so one, uh, one final question on the controls is, so the controls you said were digital, mm -hmm. why not analog? Why not? I, I didn't like the way it felt. So you did try? Yeah, I had a thing where, well, it didn't make much sense for the game because Meat Boy is like, he's, he's either, well, I mean, you have the run button, but that was the point. You have the run button, you're usually always running. You're only going these two speeds. There's only like a few places where you have to walk. You know, there's like, I think one level in Cotton Alley where you absolutely have okay. to walk. Every other time you can run. Okay. Um, so, I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> what, did you try analog or digital? Oh, that's did right. You, yes. Why did you decide digital was the, because the better it's option or the, or the, the analog, option. because I, I never, I never took and played the game in a way where I was thinking, oh, I want to be able to lightly move. Like, okay. I, I want okay. to be able to, I want to have this range of speeds. Like, okay. it was always, I either want to walk or I want to run. And that's okay. one and zero, you know? Okay. <laughs> so, like, and, and when I had, like, this, I had a sort of thing where, like, he would accelerate and he would, you could adjust the, the control to make him, like, move a little bit faster, a little bit slower than his top speed. And it felt weird. Okay. And it didn't work in the air either because that also felt, it felt strange to have something that needed to be fast paced to actually have this sort of artificial ramp up okay. for no reason. So, in some sense, you would say that the, sort of the feel of Meat Boy was yeah. supposed to be instant on, instant off. It's yeah. like, that's like, I'm firing the thruster or I'm not. Yes. And I, I, we j it's not about like getting this subtle sort of like, I just get a little more Lunar Lander-y or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Happens. It's like, okay. Yeah, right, it's, so it's all about just stop and go. But so. it was something that you played around with at some point. Yeah, in very games. early. I think I, I think I scrapped it in the first week. I'm like, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so out of three months, one week was analog, and you're like, no nope, One week digital. was like, eh, I don't like this. All right. <laughs> this isn't any good, so. All right, so we got a few minutes left, just a few minutes left, so I guess I'll close by saying, uh, what, do you have anything you want to tell us about what you're doing these days? Not necessarily, uh, not necessarily game stuff, since that's probably under wraps, but like you, for example, told us that you rewrote how you were doing all your importer stuff. Like uh, any programming stuff I wouldn't know about, because I don't know what you're working on yet, that you might want to talk about uh, or just mention uh, based on sort of what we've talked about so far. So I, um, I'm making a testing tool a uh, testing tool. Yeah. I had a terrible experience when Meat Boy launched on okay. PC. Okay. And I wanted to make sure I never had that again. So I'm making like this weird crowdsource testing tool really? thing. I've been working on it for a while. I have it. Tell, so, me, tell me, so the Meat Boy experience on PC was just that oh since there's so many platforms and graphics cards, like that <laughs> kind of testing experience? Or, or tell me a little bit about what you mean. The, so when we were doing Meat Boy, Meat Boy was going to be Wii and Xbox. Okay. It wasn't going to be PC. Okay. Because the whole time I'm thinking, fuck PC. <laughs> <laughs> and not, not in the, yeah. but in the, that's a lot of, that's a huge range yes. of like, oh, yes. this graphics card, this graphics yeah. card, this, you know, I, I oh man. Uh, when, yeah. when it came out on Steam, there was this awesome bug that sometimes it would just flicker for people. I'd be like, oh, you need vSync. They put on VSync. No, it was a program called Lux that would adjust the oh, gamma. That thing. And it would make him stutter. And I'm like, why? <laughs> just, wow, okay. No. I know the program you're talking about, like adjust the screen settings to your outside lighting yes. condition or something weird. Yeah, like this. something weird like that. And it happened to like five or six people. And I was like, Gamers never see the outside. Yeah. Why would they need <laughs> yeah. this utility? They need this. What is this utility running on their machines for? It's ridiculous. Yeah. So I was. Um, Just check for that app at startup and don't launch yeah, it. Yeah. You don't deserve to play. Dear Meat sir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when it so it was just going to be on uh, Xbox and Wii because everybody's Xbox is the same, everybody's Wii is the same, and I'm one dude, and I'm like I don't want to yeah. deal with all this stuff. But around that time, Steam was also. Like when we first started Meat Boy, starting, Steam was like, starting to come oh, up, cool, yeah. audio surf. And it was like, that's neat. And then nothing else. But then around mid-2010, okay. they're like, oh, hey, we're awesome. And yeah. we're better than everybody else. Okay. So 
so after like around July of 2010, we're like, all right, it has to come out on PC. So, so it come out on Xbox, and then a month later, it comes out on Steam. And I I bought like a whole bunch of computers, and I tested it. And I'm like, okay, this is about the specs. And then it comes out on Steam, and it breaks for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, how did this happen? Yeah. And it was and it was three three or four days. No, it was three days, and I issued 18 patches in three days. Wow. And all for system config. Yeah, yeah, all for these like little things. And it was it was stupid stuff because like it was it was whenever you have problems like that, it's always assumption. It's always oh, right. this is definitely going to do this. Right. And on consoles, you can assume all kinds of stuff. Right. But on PCs, you can't assume anything. Right. Because the so. one you tested on is roughly the same as the one it's going to ship on. So although yeah. I guess maybe that gets less true over time, they're so like, <laughs> yeah. oh, the dashboard might have a Fritos information yeah. for you that you do need. Do you want to buy a yeah. Mazda 3? Yeah. Cool. Maybe yeah. you do <laughs> in the middle of this jump. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, for the most part, you can kind of count on them to be like, this hardware is the same as the hardware yeah. we have for the most part or whatever. And, and in my inexperience and my ignorance, I was like, well, I can, I can assume that this, the graphics card is definitely like, everybody's going to be able to run this, everybody's going to be right, able to right. run that, and no. no. So um, after that happened, I'm like, this could have easily been prevented because I've also found throughout the years that fans are the people that want to test the most and will generally be the best testers. Okay. Like, we hired and we paid out, I think, uh, through Microsoft, I think we paid out like 50 grand okay. for testing for Xbox. Okay. And it was required by them, it's whatever. Yeah. But they missed stuff. And yeah. it was because they were just paid to do it. Yeah, right. Like, there were some definite fans, and I've met some testers that actually did test Meat Boy that were like super fans. But in, at the end of the day, they go home at five. Yeah. You know, they come in at eight, they go home at five, and they. You know, they, they test all day, and they can miss stuff. Yeah. And they did tend to miss a lot of stuff, and we didn't actually have any testers for the PC version, which would have helped do some of this stuff. So my thinking was, there's a bunch of fans. I can make something that I can just send out builds to people, and they can test it, and then I can get all their information, Got and then I can issue stuff to specific people oh, if they wow. have problems. So That sounds awesome. Yeah, and I've integrated that into, because I rewrote... Super Meat World, because I want it on PlayStation and Vita. Okay. That was the little level portal thing that, okay. again, I'm okay. dumb. Uh, and I'm, I'm naive. I don't yeah. know if it's dumb. It's naive. Everyone's so, got to learn some. I mean, right? Exactly. Until you ship something, you can't know all yeah. the things that are going to go wrong. So what I did is I made this Meat World th level portal thing. And I just had it hooked to a MySQL database. Because I'm like, it's free. Right. Nobody's going to fuck with it. Right. And what happens Christmas Eve? Right. <laughs> They, like, they take it and they fill it in with dumb developer. I'm like, oh, yeah, I am dumb. I am dumb to not trust the internet, not to be assholes. So, so that, like... Isn't that what the internet's for? That's yeah, it is. We, we, it's like a search engine the for, dude, for assholes? One of the dudes even, like, emailed me beforehand. And I'm like, just don't mess with it. Please, just don't mess with it. Fucking asshole mess with it. Anyway, I couldn't fix it because I was at my parents' house for Christmas. I didn't have... Oh. I had a phone. <laughs> what was I going to do? So when I got, like, I was able to, like, log into Telnet on my, uh, like, or SSH into the server through my dad's computer oh and, like, God. lock down the database so nobody could write to it and restore a backup. But it was, like, it was so traumatizing because I'm, like, I hate this. I, yeah, I, yeah. And it, it, it upset me. Like, I can imagine. Oh, man. I was, because... Because it's a very the, personal thing when you ship a product, especially when yeah. you're, like, one or two people who make it. It's, it's not, yeah, it's not it's like, not a big like faceless thing. I have thing. credit card numbers yeah. or anything. You're not... Yeah. I mean, you taught me a lesson, but yeah. it's a lesson you could have taught me without fucking up my Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. So, uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was like terrible. And it had uh, 7,500 levels and 300 custom chapters in it. Like, okay. And it was, it was up for about 10 months before somebody like, messed with it. Um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, I've rewritten that because I wanted everything, and I've integrated it into the new... Uh, Meat Boy code, so okay. it's actually in little beta testers right now, and they're like, it's getting all the Does data. Does it have a name? Nicrama. Nicrama? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, Kyle Pulver gave it to me. It's okay. some Lovecraftian zombifying essence, <laughs> okay. and it just sounds awesome. So, because <laughs> originally I thought it was going to be like a SETI at home kind of thing, okay. where I could just 
anonymously, like, yeah, and right. I'm like, wait a minute, this might be Skynet eventually, yeah, so yeah, let's right. not do that. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's got to avoid making the Terminator yeah, but if the, we're going to survive. But the name's cool, so I kept the name. <laughs> well, I think we're just about out of time. Cool. Thank you so much for talking with me. It's been yeah, an absolute pleasure. Yeah, this was pleasure. fun. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm sure everyone out there appreciates yeah. it. <laughs>